What's up, guys? Let's take a look at the progress of our SPS show tank. Since our last update, we've planted a lot more SPS colonies in this aquarium. Originally, we planted a couple of the more common species just to make sure that nothing goes terribly wrong. Now, I was pretty confident that everything would be fine, but I didn't want any unexpected surprises so soon after coming out of this tank's ugly phase. I especially didn't want to risk some of the really nice high-end Acropora that we have growing out. We have some really nice pieces growing in the farming systems, and whenever we get high-end Acropora, they tend to arrive in some shade of disappointing brown, and it takes about a month or so for them to recover from the shipping stress and really color up nicely. Anyhow, after about a month with the handful of test pieces, it was pretty clear that things were stabilizing and the planting process then went into overdrive. There's probably about 24 small frags that were added in since that time, I'm really looking forward to some of our really nice small frags that are growing out to grow to the point that we can start propagating them and getting a few of those cuttings into this tank. But right now, many of them are only one inch in size and that's the only frag that we have. Patience, right? One thing that I've noticed though about this tank is that the first SPS that were planted are really starting to take off and some of the larger pieces look like they're ready to explode in growth. They're developing a nice, large, encrusting base, and from that base, you can see them developing new branches. That's a really great sign that things are going well. Another observation is that they're growing faster in this tank than comparable colonies in the frag system. These tanks share water with each other, so chemically, they're pretty much the same. They share the same filtration and everything. The difference in growth rates could be for a few different reasons. There are more fish in this tank, so that's a much bigger source of nitrate. While the overall system has a nitrate level of about, I don't know, 15 to 20 parts per million, these fish are huge and hungry all the time. So we end up feeding this tank more heavily than the frag tanks. Also, just the proximity of these fish is probably contributing that access to nitrate. We don't want a lot of nitrate, but a low steady level has worked out great for us. There's also quite a bit more flow and that's coming from basically double the number of closed loop pumps, and there's also more light from double the number of lighting fixtures. In theory, this tank is double the water volume, so doubling the light and the flow really shouldn't make that much of a difference, but in practice, it totally is. I don't know if this is a common saying in this hobby at all, but one of my favorite movie lines was a character in the movie Contact saying, why buy one when you can buy two for twice the price? And that's essentially what's happened with this big SPS show tank. One last thing that I'll mention about this tank is that we've changed the intakes on the closed loops. The original plan was to use large strainers 
so that the suction from the Vectra L1 pumps that we're using was more evenly distributed. The problem there is that these fins are just a little bit too large, and small fish like wrasses and damsels could make their way too close to the intakes and still get sucked in. To combat this, we put baskets over the entire thing, which works great in the frag tanks because we can very easily place racks of corals on top. But in the show tank though, they were a bit unsightly, less so than you might think, because from the front of the tank, they just disappear visually. The baskets were also a pain to get in and out of the tank for cleaning, because they're close to the aquascape, and over time that problem would only get worse as the coral started growing. Also, just as a general rule, when you make maintenance more difficult, especially in these large systems, maintenance doesn't happen. So these baskets needed to go. Thing is, the baskets were never meant to be a permanent fixture in this tank. They were kind of a spur of the moment fix, but they hung around a lot longer than they should have. So out they go. What we've done is put in these low profile strainers and these low profile strainers look much more elegant in comparison. My only real worry is that they might not diffuse the suction enough, which could result in a fish getting stuck on it. I felt it with my hand, and while I could feel something there, it didn't feel like a black hole or anything that would just kill a fish. Well, fingers crossed on that one. At least I'm 100% sure that it won't suck one in entirely. The openings are much smaller than the previous ones. That pretty much does it for this update. We are at the point now where we're just waiting for these corals to take off. I'm actually enjoying making this series because it's fun to document everything and later go back and see what progress has been made. I don't know about you guys, but when I look at a tank every day, it feels like nothing really changes. But in reality, a whole lot is going on. And kind of having this all recorded and chronicled, it is a nice visual reference to go back a couple months to see how things are progressing. Anyhow, that does it from here. If you like these sort of updates, subscribe to this channel and make sure you turn on notifications. All right, until next time, happy reefing.